Hello, it's Parm King, the the dungeon master for Legends of Barovia, and I'm just enjoying myself rolling some die here on the Foundry platform using the module Dice So Nice. Today I want to talk about dice and probability. This video is not really just for dungeon masters, it's for players as well. Now, there are only really two core types of game mechanics in the world. There are games of pure strategy where there's no no probability like chess and there's games in which there's some kind of probability incorporated into the game mechanic whether it's cards where you're drawing cards or whether you're rolling dice like in Yahtzee or in Monopoly and Dungeons and Dragons incorporate dice which inject a probability mechanic now this video is really a very elementary video on probability dice and statistics and outcome but I thought it was important to share because I want to really get people thinking a little bit on the player side is what weapon should I use should I be applying a luck point or inspirational point how is advantage and disadvantage going to affect me what kind of skill check is it going to affect me modifiers and for dungeon masters to think about their DC checks and how should they set them and other types of mechanics and nested tables that you can incorporate whether it's into foundry or whether you're playing on the tabletop however before we get started I really want to give a special shout out and a thank you to all those people that voted for me as the video star winner in the league of extraordinary foundry developers now uh, it, they have a discord channel these are all developers and programmers uh, of modules for Foundry. It was a huge honor to even be uh, included in the, the prize and the awards ceremony as I am not a developer or programmer even though I would like to be but it was really nice that they appreciated the fact that I'm kind of playing and learning and, and tweaking and using their modules and then providing lots of videos or and hopefully a lot more videos out there to the community on how to use these different modules and how much fun and excitement I have and I'm very passionate bit of, of Foundry and Dungeons and Dragons as you can see so thanks again to all those people that voted for me thank you special thank you for the recognition from the League of Extraordinary Foundry developers I put a link to their discord channel down below and if you are a developer or you have ideas for a module or you want to be a part of that community it's a phenomenal community go ahead and join the discord channel down below a little thing that I found out that I had no idea last night during the award ceremony is there are now over 500 modules for foundry and the new version 7 will be out soon so those are things to look forward to thanks again so let's move on here I want to go ahead and jump right into our discussion so if you leave this video with anything I want you just to remember this particular saying it may be improbable but not impossible whenever we're playing with anything with a game of chance remember this because as players you might not think it is possible but it is it's just it's not impossible you're talking about measurements of probability and so it may be improbable but it's not impossible and that core philosophy is so important to understand when we're talking about probabilities now I'm going to go through each of the dice and talk about them a little bit and then go through some of those tables that I think will help you think a little bit about more about dice rolling advantages disadvantages and some other mechanics the first dice is the d4 and I wrote this in three different notations because some people like to think in fractions some in decimals and some in percentages the d4 die is a 25 percent chance of any single one number coming up you have four sides one through four one out of four chance is a 25 percent chance we can say that we can show that in fractions as one quarter or 0.25 in decimal or 25 percent when we're looking at a d6 die which is the most common die in all games including craps and monopoly clue uh, yahtzee is a for any single number coming up it's a one sixth chance or 16.6 .6 percent chance of a single number coming up on the d6 when we're looking at d8 we're looking at a 12.5 percent chance or one eighth a d10 is fairly easy it's a 10 percent chance or a one in ten chance of something coming up uh, a single number coming up on the d10 d12 is a 8.3 percent chance of any single number and then we get to our beloved d20 die and that's a five percent or one in twenty chance of one number 
coming up on the D20. Now we do talk about another uh, another die call or percentile die called the D100, and I'm sure someone's made a D100 die, but typically we use two different color D10 die to represent rolling a D100 percentile. Uh, one color represents 1 through 9, the other color represents the tens column 10, 20, 30, 40. We add those together to come up with a number of 1 through 100. Of course, rolling two zeros represents 100. So you have a 1% chance, and this is also known as a percentile die. Now, let's talk about advantage and disadvantage. This is one of those mechanics that Wizard of the Coast added to Dungeons and Dragons. It wasn't in there when I first started playing back in the 80s, and I really love this mechanic. So let's talk a little bit about this. And I put this table here in here because I think it gives us a really good visual representation of what's happening. Now, this is a DC check over here. It's a straight 1 through 20 DC check. This is calculated on rolling a d20 die with no modifiers, just to keep it simple. So for instance, rolling a DC check of one, so you're rolling a 20-sided die, one of these, against a DC check of one, you don't even need to roll the die. It's already preordained. You're going to roll a one through a 20 on here. That's a fact. There's 20 sides. And so to roll a one or higher, it's a 100% chance on a normal roll. Obviously, advantage and disadvantage are going to play no effect in a DC1 check, and that's probably why we don't have a DC1 check. Uh, you don't start noticing the calculational differences until you get to DC2 and on up. So to roll a 2 or higher on a 20-sided die normally is a 95% chance of getting a 2 or higher on here. With advantage, it goes to 99.8%, and disadvantage, it drops down to a 90% chance. Now you can see here in advantages, I have a, a one color green, and up here at a DC 15 check, when it jumps to DC 16, I change the green. And I did this because I want to show what I would call advantage to the player versus advantage to the game master or to the house or, or to the world. So at DC 15, on advantage, with no other modifiers, you still have the probability still in your favor for you to, to get a success at 51%, greater than 50% odds. However, as soon as you get to DC 16, with no modifiers, you are now at disadvantage of being successful. And this is something we don't always think about or talk about. Where does it become favorable, favorable for me, and where do, I, where, where do I lose favor, or do I lose the, the edge you know, an edge in here, and when we talk about this in Game of Chat or creating edge, I have a 1%, a DC 15, I have a 1% edge over the house, technically, or over the world, or over the game master of being successful. You can see rolling a straight D20 to get a 15% uh, chance is only a 30%. So when you're rolling a DC die with no advantage, you, you have an edge at rolling a 10 DC 10 check or lower, you have an edge. You lose your edge at DC 11. It's, it's parity or even Steven at DC 11. And then you lose your edge and either the game master, or the creature, or the world now has the edge over you. You can see I did a differential column here. It really shows you how it expands quite a bit. Now when we start looking at disadvantage, wow, you just get peppered and clobbered. I mean, you lose advantage and you lose your edge at a DC-7. I mean, you drop below 50%. At DC-7, straight check, no modifiers, rolling disadvantage, you're at 49% on a 7 check. I mean, that kind of blows. I mean, that really blows. Check it up at DC-20. At a DC-20, it's not impossible, but it's improbable that you're going to get a D-20 on a disadvantage. I mean, you're down at 0.2% chance. That's less than 1% chance of rolling a 20 when you're rolling disadvantage on a straight check. On advantage, you're at 10%, almost 10%. So you're almost doubling the odds of rolling a 20 when you're rolling advantage uh, on a straight check. This is a really awesome table. I would cut this table out if I had a game screen and have it there as a game master to determine whether I want players to roll a disadvantage, advantage, what are the odds, and figuring out my own DC checks. I do use a lot of DC checks in my own game on the fly to make some 
uh, on the fly determinations and I have this chart with me to, to make those dis decisions all the time, whether it's a DC 10, uh, whether it's a DC 6 with advantage or disadvantage, it really is going to impact the players. Now, if the players don't understand this chart and you're just telling them to roll, they're really not going, you know, they're really not going to know if it's going to be good or bad, right? I mean, having this and having some knowledge of this chart as a player, you might think twice about doing something. You might go, well, wait a second. You know, you, you might think, well, it's a, it's only a, you know, a DC eight check, and I'm rolling disadvantage. Big deal. Well, that's a 42% chance. You, you don't have any edge. You've lost your edge. You might want to rethink what you're doing in that scenario. So this chart, I think, is helpful for not only dungeon masters but for players. Let's move on to roll any number. I created this chart just to give you an idea of rolling any groups of numbers. So obviously rolling any single number, we already went through that with each dice. A, a D4 is 25%, D20 is 5%. But rolling any four numbers on a D4, obviously there's only four numbers on a D4, you got a 100% chance. But D, to roll any four numbers on a D20, that's a 20% chance, right? There's you're looking at four possible outcomes out of 20, that's 20% chance. And that's really easy to figure out. Just take the 5% increment steps, multiply it times four, you got 20%. So this is just a different way of looking at probabilities and outcomes of any groups of numbers on the different types of die. Now the last uh, table I hit, put here together is just something to think about here. and. Um, I put this together because I use critical tables, uh, critical success and critical failure tables. So if you roll a critical 20, typically people roll a critical 20 for a critical hit, and they go, well, just double your damage or just add a D12 die or whatever it is. You could create a critical success table on there. Um, and I run a critical failure table. So when you roll a natural one, you have a critical failure table. And I get a lot of pushback on that, which is fine. I don't mind, I'm a big boy, I can handle it. And they say, well, you have a 5% chance of failing. Well, you don't have a 5% of chance of critical failure. You have a 5% chance of rolling on a critical failure table. And what I've done on this table here to, is to show you is when you're rolling two D20 dice, you have 400 possible outcomes. So for you to roll a D20 and get a one, that's a 5% chance. But to roll on the second D20, to roll a one again, right? So if you're rolling two D20 dice, to roll two ones, technically, you have less than a 1% chance. That's down at 0.25. So on my critical failure table, for a character's weapon to break, right? We're talking about a less than a 1% chance. We're down at a quarter percent chance of their weapon, of a weapon failure or maybe causing harm to themselves or to another player. So that's why I don't really have a problem with critical failure tables. And once you explain this to your players, they get less fearful. They go, oh, okay, you mean I got less than a 1% chance in combat of something happening to my sword or dropping my weapon. Sure, and we can actually drive that further down if we want to by just creating nested table or adding in percentile dice. So what's beautiful about probabilities and using these dice, which is so fun, is you can create by creating nested tables and modifiers, increasing or decreasing the probabilities. And again, you don't have to use critical success or critical failure tables, but what this is just doing is showing you when you're rolling double dice, the same number twice, the possible outcomes. And it's pretty simple. Uh, one of the most common ones we use is D6. Uh, I used to play a lot of craps uh, in another another lifetime and it's two, two D6 die uh, and the probability of rolling the same number twice, well it's one out of 36 chance. So there's 36 possible outcome on two dice. So you have a one and a one, a one and a two, a two and a one, a one and a three. And if you go through every iteration, it comes out to 36 chances. And you can do that with two 20-sided die and you go, oh my gosh, there's 400 different iterations of D20 die. Uh, and getting one out of 400, well, that's less than 1%. Um, I hope this was helpful. I got a little treat for you at the end. Um, one of the, the die I find uh, least used but most interesting is the D4 die. And I, as I was making this video, I went on the internet and found that there's some really interesting designs for D4 die, which is one of the ones that you can do a lot of playing with. So you have this curved one up here I thought was really cool. In fact, that would be probably a fun die just to roll. This one looks like a weapon. I really thought this was cool. 
This one's a tooth. It's it it looks like a tooth. I thought this would be a cool Dungeons and Dragon die. This one is probably a really easy die to roll here. It's got four sides and there's two sides, which is improbable to land on. Not impossible. Improbable, which is the fifth and sixth side. These are pretty interesting. We got one big fat side, large side, and then that lands on obviously on the bottom. Um, it's not improbable to land on one of these small sides though. So maybe this is not from a probability standpoint the best idea, but it is very interesting. And I put this one in here just because it has the outcome at the top. If we go back to the D4 die, this is the traditional D4 that I grew up playing with back in the 80s with the, the, the correct number or the outcome as a bottom number. This one here, they switched it just by rotating the three numbers to having it as a top number. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know I did. I am going to go back and start uh, doing some more rolls in, on my uh, foundry and getting ready for my session coming up later in the week. Thanks again. May all your rolls be critical 20s and super successful. Thanks for taking time to watch this video, and I hope it was helpful and insightful for you.